particular opportunities that exist within Birmingham City Council's remit. Uh, it's the largest local authority in Europe, as many of us know, and we've also got the Commonwealth Games uh, coming in just a little over two years, which is another uh, wonderful opportunity, uh, which is going to involve an awful lot of procurement by the council. And what we want to find out today is how our local businesses can get involved and indeed more around the council's plans to ensure that that happens. Um, and I'm delighted to be joined uh, this morning by Councillor Tristan Chatfield, who's the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. Also Jane Prethway, who's the Assistant Director in the Housing Development, which includes the Growth Directorate at the Council. And Richard Tibbetts, the Head of Contract Management and the Corporate Procurement Services at Birmingham City Council. So uh, we'll shortly be hearing from our, our three council uh, representatives um, as we go along and then we'll, we'll have opportunities for, for a Q&A afterwards. We are aiming at a 10.45 finish. If you do have questions, then please do pop them in the, the chat and we'll endeavour to pick those up as we go along and get those over to uh, the council representatives. If there's questions that we don't have time for, then what we'll endeavour to do is to still um, speak with, with Councillor Chatfield and see if we can get some answers and back to anyone uh, who wants to. So it's all about uh, joining up and hopefully helping businesses to learn that little bit more uh, around how they can tap into these procurement opportunities. So um, just a few quick words from me, uh, if you'll indulge me uh, briefly, we've got a couple of slides. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know too much about the Chamber, uh, the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce, we're now one of the largest uh, chambers uh, in the country, representing over uh, three and a half thousand businesses in our region. And our primary function, uh, we like to think, is to help connect businesses, to support businesses and to help them grow. Right now, obviously, there's a lot of effort and focus uh, around COVID-19 helping to translate the various different support measures that are in, have been put in place by government, helping businesses to understand those and how they can access them. And also, you know, sharing best practice and you know, through webinars like this, really helping people to, um, to look at different opportunities that they may not have been exploring before, but to ensure that their business is making the most of everything that they can to come through this period and form part of the, the region's uh, recovery as we will bounce back from the impact of COVID-19. Um, we also, I just wanted to take the, the chance to, to highlight a week of activity next week that we have coming up on international trade. I think the, the message that we will um, export our way out of the coronavirus situation is one that's certainly coming through from government. The Chamber uh, has an awful lot of expertise around international trade. Uh, we um, run the local uh, Department of International Trade Export Service and we have a Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce and also a Transatlantic Chamber, which are all focused on uh, uh, trading opportunities overseas. We've got a big conference coming up on Wednesday afternoon and a whole host of webinars across the week. Hoping we can put the details up on the screen uh, right now, but if not, you'll be able to follow that and pick up all the information uh, on our social media feed or our website. Right, so I'm now going to hand over. I think those, uh, those details are just coming up on the, the screen now. Um, so I'm now gonna hand over to Councillor Chatfield uh, to kick off uh, the presentation from uh, the council. Um, so Councillor, the floor is yours. Thank you, and I hope you can all see me. Uh, this is the first time I've done one of these on these platforms, so there is always a potential for it to go absolutely hilariously wrong. OK, um, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for having me today. Um, as Paul has outlined, we at Birmingham City Council are really keen to work with our local supply chain, uh, local businesses for our procurement processes to make sure that uh, local businesses get opportunities uh, across the city, obviously, but in the wider region. We are extraordinarily proud of, of how many local businesses we work with and how large those contracts are. I could just have the next slide, please. Ooh, thank you very much. So these are just some uh, key numbers uh, just to go through quickly. Um, so 2.3 billion per annum spent on goods and services, 993 million per annum with suppliers, and I'll get the figures are all up there in terms of the different areas we spend, but you'll notice how significant uh, many of those figures are. As Paul said, we are the largest local authority in Europe. Um, we are therefore a huge uh, commissioning and procurement organisation. 
that has deep roots in the local economy and has sort of sustained long term relationships, with lots of companies, including no doubt many of you. But I think what's critical now, what we really want to talk about today is the future and what opportunities there are ahead of us. And obviously in a post COVID environment, we really want Birmingham City Council through its local supply chain and procurement to support business growth and economic development as we enter into a, an economic recovery phase. Can I have the next slide? So this just gives you a quick overview of some of the uh, sort of things that we, we deal with uh, you know, on a sort of yearly basis. So we've got 410 live contracts right now, 146 contracts expiring in the next 24 months and 120 live projects at any one time. So you can see just how much activity is going on. So we've got, uh, many of you will be aware, Find It in Birmingham, which is our online platform where uh, members sign up and they can access um, contract information and opportunities right across the city. Uh, again, huge numbers go through that. 5,000 contract opportunities posted since the launch. And we've got, of course, something I'm personally immensely proud of is of great political importance to us, Labour administration, is the Birmingham Business Charter for Social Responsibility, which is how we make sure we get all those social value benefits through our contracts. And again, I'm sure many of you are aware of those, but if there are questions, you can obviously pick those up. Uh, just a highlight of one of those things that that social value allows us to do is so we have created 179 apprentices uh, since April last year. So it does make a significant difference to the lives of people in our city. Now the next slide, please. So what I'm going to do now is hand over to Jane, who's going to talk through some of the huge and really exciting developments that are coming up in Birmingham. But again, I'll just make the point about COVID is that what we try, what these developments will allow us to do is underpin the future economic growth that will help us come out of this current period in sort of a, a stronger position than we went into it. Hi, um, uh, I'm Jane Trithewey. I'm the Assistant Director for Housing Development at uh, Birmingham City Council. I'm very pleased to be talking to you today, though uh, some of the schemes I'm talking about today are not necessarily housing ones, but uh, they do have housing elements in them. But I think what they do is illustrate the broad range of activity that Birmingham City Council is committed to. So there are some really major key developments coming up in, in Birmingham in the coming um, uh, year, two years, three years. So I've just got a few slides to run through um, the high level of what these are. Um, firstly, uh, infrastructure commitments. You, everybody is aware of HS2. Uh, we have this as a 25-year vision. It is effectively with Curzon um, and what's what's coming out of, of that development. One of the biggest urban regeneration schemes in Britain. Huge amount of opportunity in that, totally central to Birmingham, and we anticipate it will unlock an awful lot more across the region, but focused in particular on Curzon. Out of that then comes a really significant investment plan for that locality. Um, significant new public spaces, Midland Metro extension through to Digbeth and lots of other local transport investments that we hope will make it much easier for people to access opportunities there and to link that part of the city uh, much more effectively. Um, within all of these sorts of um, uh, investment opportunities there will be uh, layers of contracting and subcontracting that we can see uh, will come through over the next um, few years. Um, the east side metro extension as well um, again with um, HS2 that opens up the wider context for other projects to progress such as the uh, Digbeth and Curzon public realm projects so um, quite a lot going on simply on infrastructure alone. So can we go to the next slide please? Um, so looking now at the commercial and mixed use opportunities, um, Digbeth is a, a major long term vision. It's centred around the iconic custard factory um, and there is a, a 2.2 million square feet of commercial space that we see coming out of that, um, as well as around um, uh, 1,850 new homes. Um, alongside that, there will be um, shops, restaurants, cafes, leisure facilities. Um, it's a major um, regeneration of that area, um, a vision to see that coming forward and being being developed really significantly. Smithfield, uh, you'll be aware that the old Smithfield market was uh, demolished and that was to uh, be relocated, which is now open, and 
we've now got that opened up as um, over 3 million square feet of new floor space potential. Um, so we're looking there at 2,000 new homes, new squares, parks and gardens coming forwards. Uh, also seeing that as a family and leisure destination, there will be event spaces, restaurants and the retail markets. So we're looking very much further forward coming out of this uh, pandemic period um, and the, the um, downturn that that's created to look forward to some really quite exciting opportunities in the city centre. Um, and finally, the Paradise Development, uh, 170,000 square metres of Grade A office-led uh, development at Paradise. Uh, they're already um, uh, um, uh, uh, tenants signed up for that with leases let um, and so we anticipate that being um, uh, a success for the city centre as well. So some really quite um, interesting, exciting, quite varied as well opportunities that we anticipate coming out of that. Some that will be led directly from the city council in terms of um, contracts and opportunities and others that we expect to flow through from that um, as they develop commercially. Next slide please. Thank you. So um, in terms of housing opportunities, people will be uh, very aware of the Commonwealth Games and the Perry Bar. Um, and we talk about legacy there because obviously whilst the Commonwealth Games themselves are really exciting um, for 2022, um, it's a sort of a, a short window of, um, of activity and really the legacy active, uh, outcomes are, are much more significant for the city. Uh, so we have planning consent already for nearly 2,000 new homes, um, but also the, actually the activity that supports the, the games and the legacy is, is really far more major than that. So uh, there's the redeveloped rail station and the bus interchange. There will also be walking and cycling provision. And we're looking at really significant redevelopment of the local centre. Um, and this will be a, a great deal of activity in the run up to the Commonwealth Games, which is already obviously underway, as you'll be aware. But thereafter as well, there'll be further phases of development. So a major second phase of residential development, for example, will follow on from the games as well. Um, Ladywood, uh, there are two sites, um, uh, Ladywood Central and Ladywood Broad Street that we're looking at. Those have been out for um, procurement already, but uh, that, that process has uh, been slightly slowed down by the current situation, but we anticipate that picking up again later on this year, um, all being well. Um, but come what may with that, there is a really significant uh, housing development opportunity there that we will want to take forwards and that will happen over quite a few years and uh, anticipate uh, the high level contracting um, procurement, but then also underneath that all those subcontractor opportunities and supply chain opportunities. Uh, my own area is uh, Birmingham Municipal Housing Trust um, and we do have our delivery plan up to 2029 that will deliver over 300, sorry, 3,000 new homes for uh, rent and for sale. Uh, it's a program worth uh, around £346 million. Um, we regularly go out to procure um, contractors uh, for this and we also use uh, local architects, uh, local employees, agents and we expect our contractors to um, uh, uh, take seriously our, our expectations of using local supply chain, local uh, subcontractors in the activities that they deliver on our behalf. So out of all of that activity you ought to see opportunities for um, uh, local businesses in Birmingham to benefit. Thanks very much. I think I'm handing over now to um, uh, Richard Tibbetts on the procurement side. Morning all. Could we move to the next, the next slide please? Yes, yeah, so um, with all of our um, opportunities we, we like to set up uh, maximum access to the um, to the, those opportunities to the supply chain. So we try to advertise all of them more broadly um, on various websites and portals. So the um, major opportunities, obviously, we have to advertise on our OGU European Journal website. Um, but we also, through our, our local website, we have Find It in Birmingham, um, which again it, it links into lots of business to business opportunities. But you can also view our our procurement and tendering opportunities on there. We um, it, it goes through our intend system as well, um, and also contracts finder. So we really try and broadcast our opportunities as widely as possible. So next slide. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. 
Richard, Jane and uh, and Tristan as well for sort of that outline. And um, it's clear there's a ton of opportunities out there and uh, they're sort of there as to you know, where they're being advertised and how people can find it. Just going to dig into um, some questions that are coming through. And there's a, a good one to start us off with from Louise Vickers here, who who's registered on Find It in Birmingham and makes the point that, that she doesn't seem to see any contracts for training uh, on there. Um, her business provides schools uh, and businesses with legally accredited, accredited training courses in first aid, health, safety um, and the like. And just, yeah, how how can she link in with other uh, council run sort of businesses? Um, so we can see the question up on the screen. I don't know if, if uh, one of you or, or, you know, or more would like to come back on that just around, yeah, sort of training procurement. And is is there if it's not on Find It in Birmingham, is there somewhere else that Louise should be looking and other businesses for that? Um, shall I answer that, Paul? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, obviously um, we only advertise when we actually have uh, an opportunity. Um, sorry, let me just go to camera. With a lot of these training um, situations, we do do quite a lot in house at the moment. Um, so the opportunities where we have gone more broadly have been sort of top up resources, certainly on health and safety and first aid um, through our occupational health team uh, and food safety through our um, organisation CityServe. Um, if there are particular areas that are of interest, obviously if you link in through to me, I can signpost you to the various parts of the council that cover off those areas um, just by way of an introductory um, brokering session. Thanks, Richard. And maybe would you pop your contact details in the, the chat bar and that way um, Louise and others can can pick yes, those cool. up. Yeah. Um, and now Hardeep has, has got another uh, sort of specific uh, question here um, and has reached out to CP or the email address cps at birmingham.gov.uk about a month ago, um, but hasn't had a, a response yet. And there seems to be an issue uh, uploading uh, the, the company there. I don't know again maybe there's a, is that one for yourself richard um yes obviously i'm not sort of cited on the specific details but i'm a little bit surprised that you haven't had a response um in that length of time again i'll pop my details in the chat and um we can follow up that directly offline thank you and obviously you know please do keep uh, the questions coming in the uh, the chat bar i mean you know What's striking, I suppose, is, you know, do you have views on is there more that can be done? And I know that's part of what we're doing today, you know, to try to um, highlight the opportunities that are out there and the existing ways of connecting in and to um, really make sure that as many businesses as possible are aware and know how to do that. But, um, I mean, do you collectively see particular barriers that stop local businesses from getting involved with uh, your procurement and you know are there ways of um trying to to work around those or to overcome those barriers um absolutely not um you know we have a lot of success working with local organizations uh some time ago we tendered a um print management contract and over 90 percent of the printing that is done is done locally through that contract with cds and um, it was very much set out within the tender documentation that actually we wanted to use local supply chains. Um, historically, we've done uh, meet the buyer events. Um, there's an obvious potential opportunity for us to, to sort of restart that up again to give organisations such as yourselves um, direct access to the procurement team, um, really. So that's potentially something we can do. Um, I think the other thing really is um, something about how we signpost local organisations through to our sort of primary contracting workforce really. Um, you know, we have our big construction contractors and through their charter commitments we do um, mandate that they, they use local organisations but I'm just wondering if there's something else that we can do there to perhaps broke a discussion with, with, our, with our larger organisations. So certainly something we can think about. Um, yeah. the, the, do delegates have any other thoughts on, on that at all? They, I'm sure. And that's, it's, it's certainly a way that, um, you know, working with the chamber as well, and you know, we've got good links with the council and 
you know, happy to play a part in ensuring that that that, that connectivity between council and businesses is, is, is as, as strong as it possibly can be. I know um, there's a, a request for you to drop your email in the, the chat. I'm sure Rich has been ans answering the questions, but I'm sure he'll, uh, yeah. he'll get that done as soon as uh, as soon as I give him a bit of a breather. Um, Michael uh, from ProfTech Talent um, uh, recruits around the, the UK, actually based in Tamworth, but just asking is, is Find It in Birmingham the portal uh, for looking at uh, job vacancies? Or is there a, a dedicated website for those? Um, well, vacancies, it's, I mean, it's, it's very interesting, actually. We have um, our main contract for, for agency workers is actually through Hayes, um, and that runs for, for the sort of 14 months. Um, we used to use around about 30 or 40 individual organisations, um, but that was very kind of onerous from a management perspective. So we moved to a mass service provider. Um, again, certainly... Um, it's not particularly where the vehicle for us advertising vacancies is found in Birmingham. Um, tend to be interim opportunities, obviously, go to our Hayes um, website and portal and on the Birmingham Council website. The, um, so, I can, you know, again, I can certainly broker um, a discussion with, with Hayes for you um, because they have around about 30 or 40 organisations on their supply chain that cover various specialisms, um, social care, um, planning. So, you know, that's certainly the way to route in through the council. And almost re-emphasises my, my earlier comment about how do we, how do we broker that um, relationship between our primary contracting workforce and, and the local supply chain. I think it's about re reaching reaching out to us and us, us facilitating that, that discussion. Yeah, well, look, thank you. That's a really sort of comprehensive answer. Hopefully, um, Michael, there's something there that, that, that can be followed up as well. I know... Um, Bev has just said that she's struggling to hear you, Richard, which is a shame, but can um, can tell you that this is being recorded and we will be popping a link out via the channels afterwards. So um, don't worry about that. Now, Angela has raised the point that um, smaller businesses such as hers uh, can struggle to tender for, for opportunities just because of the complexity of the sort of procurement documents. Um, I guess what's your 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 sense on that? How aware are you, and are there ways of um, of, of I say sort of mitigating that to a degree? Yeah, I think it's a really good question, Angela. Actually, it's it's we find ourselves as a as a local authority uh, procurement team sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Really, um, <clears throat> there is we have um, EU procurement legislation which we have to comply with which means there are certain criteria that we have to include in our tender documentation we also have our charter um, uh, cons considerations that need to be included obviously gdpr is now a big part of things so there's almost the frustration from our perspective there's almost this, this sort of ever growing list of things that the council needs uh, in order to have um, an effective supply chain in place what i think covid has shown us really is actually when push comes to shove we can do things quicker we can do things leaner um we put in some accelerated governance arrangements um with provision of the eu regs for in situations such as national emergencies for, for almost direct award rather than going through um a lengthy procurement process um, and we've we've had to utilize that um very effectively i might say to, to source our, our sort of ppe so um it, what it did do is, is, is um, it was almost a catalyst for making us do things quicker and more effectively. And one of the things that I'm keen to do this year is to really revisit our tender documentation, really try and um, cut it down to, 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 to read the, the absolute basics, but keeping us um, as compliant as possible. Um, it is confusing for local organisations and small organisations when they get you know a 60, 70 page document that um, is, is difficult to navigate unless you're, you're familiar with those sort of things. So I think, yes, it's a valid question. Yes, absolutely. I'm very keen to do that. Um, and again, perhaps just going back to my earlier comments about Meet the Buyer events, um, kind of keen to understand from your perspective as, as delegates, really, what particular aspects you find frustrating and, and onerous within our tender documentation. So again, I'm, I'm very keen to almost have a follow-up meeting if that's possible when when this is over with 
perhaps broker by yourself, Paul, to, yep. to understand the frustrations of, of the local supply chain in doing business with us. It sounds like a really good idea, doesn't it? Where it's that, um, set for constructive reasons, but if we could drill down into sort of specific examples, then at least you know what you need to be be looking at. And I, and I think that your your answer um, there again very comprehensive. That there's so many rules and regulations which um, can be frustrating, and it and it can certainly that's what we pick up a lot. It's almost the scale of detail just is uh puts people off and you know you sort of uh will sort of fall at the first hurdle before you even get through to the procurement i know that georgina dawson from eib who we've done a lot of uh, work with at the chamber they're a, a big management consultancy and i suppose um i mean the question is around you know how do you see some of the processes changing in a post-covid world which you touched on there but um just to, to angela's point you know in addition to um trying to you know sort of navigate their way through there's also organizations such as eib who you can speak to um and they they do a lot of the heavy lifting you know they're sort of focused on this and would certainly uh encourage anyone who wants that additional help or support to look at third parties who are focused in on um so bid writing or procurement sort of uh, management uh and to get that help and, and eib's a certainly a great place to start so um just coming back now to uh there's a question from richard here who's a, a local third tier supplier uh, and products were specified for uh the, the commonwealth games uh, scheme over in perry bar um and he's just saying that despite there being no commercial barriers the plots awarded so far have all gone to companies outside of the west midlands um what can we do for the remaining plots so i don't know if, if that's yourself richard or uh, jane or, or tristan who want to come in on on that and um, i'm not particularly close to, to, to the detail of some of the comments i don't know whether jane has any views on that on that just wait for if jane's able to get the mic and camera on just some thoughts it's certainly to richard's point something that now, the I know everyone's very aware, you know, and the aim is that I think the games will procure over eighty percent um, of of all opportunities you know, from within the region. Any time we're seeing stuff go to people outside of the region, there's a um, frustration and make maybe can feel like a missed opportunity. Um, but yeah, just drilling in on, on Perry Bar. I don't know if Jane's there or able to come in and respond to Tristan. Yeah, whilst you whilst wait for Jane, I'm not sure. I think she still is around. I'm um, sorry if there's a bit of background noise. Someone's decided to drill a hole in my road right outside my front window. So apologies for that, if you can hear that. Um, I was just going to make the general point that we are um, extremely proud of the number of local businesses that we did we have worked through. And I think there is an absolute commitment in Birmingham to work with local businesses. I can't really talk about the detailed specifics of this example, but broadly speaking, the percentage of uh, work goes to local companies in Birmingham in the high 60s or low 70s so it is um we are in terms of national standards we are one of the highest local procuring um local authorities and i think that is something we we should be proud of but also actually it does reflect i think in part the relationships the strong relationships we have locally uh, through the chamber but also also directly into businesses but also i think it also reflects the strong um sort of economy in the west midlands actually but actually there are companies um, of a sort of high high quality, uh, high standards, but competitive on price that we can do business with in the area. I, th I think just to, that, to just to add to Kristen's point there, actually, you know, there is a huge amount of untapped potential in, in the Birmingham area. Um, and what we found, particularly through COVID, we, we have a contract um, with an organ local organisation called Nabisco. Um, they've absolutely bent over backwards uh, to help us out during, during COVID and really gone the extra mile and what we found is when we do deal with local organisations, they're far more willing to do that than they are with um, uh, perhaps uh, large uh, national organisations. So I think it, it's, a really, it's about tapping into that, um, that, that opportunity, really, very much. Yeah, so. and, and that's the thing, isn't it? I suppose there, there's lots of, of benefits, certainly economic ones. There's also even the emotive benefits, isn't there? And we've all, we have a resident here living and working here. You've got that sense of skin in the game and certainly i think with the developments that we've seen 
you know, across the city in the last decade, uh, the sort of renaissance and, you know, all of the schemes that were outlined earlier are, are representative of that. It's enhanced that sense of local pride. And I think people want to, to be involved. And you're right, Richard, there's that sense of going the extra mile, which ultimately is, is to the benefit of, of all. There's a sort of technical question here from Hardy, um, who's really talking about, uh, 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 do you welcome organizations submitting um, bids and tenders as a consortium or can somebody win and then are they able to subcontract? Um, we, we have the, the opportunity to do both really. Uh, I think I can't quote which page but certainly um, our tender documentation is asked uh, for details about whether you're a single organization, a joint venture, a consortium um, and actually if you're a primary organization um, we do allow subcontracting in, in our standard clauses. So it, it's kind of a bit of flexibility of both, really. Again, just going back to that um, the sort of untapped potential and the, the sort of innovation opportunity. There are some markets that um, are very niche that there aren't many suppliers. Um, and actually, perhaps there's opportunity through thinking about things differently. To, to enable more consortium working where each part of the consortium brings a different um, part of the solution to, to the party, really. So, you know, it, it, it certainly doesn't preclude you from, from, from bidding that way at all. Yeah, thank you. And I think Jane is now back with us. And I don't know, Jane, if, if you've seen in the chat or you, you heard there was a, a question um, around some of the, the residential schemes in Perry Bar. Richard flagged up that... Uh, plots awarded so far had gone to companies outside of the West Midlands and looking to get your steer on what, what, what they can do around the remaining plots. Do you want to come in yeah. on that? Yeah, so we'll do. Um, so um, obviously the Commonwealth Games is, is, is huge. There's the, there's m massive opportunity there really for local companies, uh, but it's it's so massive and a lot of the, the drive has been around um, delivery to what is in effect a very tight time scale, obviously. Um, so I know that there, there's, there's been a lot of competition there and a lot of uh, focus there. Um, the, the scheme is being delivered uh, principally by a main contractor, Lendlease, on behalf of the council. Um, and it's through them that uh, then uh, contracting is, is being undertaken to, to the lower tiers of activity. Um, it's it's by far uh, so far not all um, uh, those contracts are let. Not everything has been um, got away yet. So there are still opportunities there, even though some obviously contracts may go elsewhere, um, and there may be reasons for that. Uh, but you know, there's still plenty of opportunity for for local contractors. Um, uh, it's it's possible that it may be worthwhile um, engaging uh, with the. Um, uh, organising committee to have a, a separate session through the, with the Chamber of Commerce, just to sort of have further conversations about what what will happen in future with the the Commonwealth Games and with obviously the legacy side of it. Because as I mentioned earlier, there are whole swathes of activity around Perry Bar that will actually follow on from the um, uh, from the Games period, uh, not precede it. So I think this is something that's that's going to run and run for quite a long time. So yes, apologies, not you know we, we can't guarantee that everybody will will kind of get in first time round, but there are still opportunities to come uh, up on uh, already on the athletes village there are still some opportunities yet to come up um, and then obviously post games as well so keep on looking at those uh, chances when they come forward and uh, I'm sure there will be um, uh, more um, uh, work for many many organizations locally yet to come yeah no thank you Jane and, and in terms of the games I you know, uh, we, we absolutely are doing that and we'll continue mm. to to hold events. Uh, some of them have, we've done so far have been specifically around procurement opportunities, yep. others a little bit more more general. Um, we had a big event at the Edgebaston Park Hotel back when we could all gather together about 200 <laughs> odd people uh, in the room. I think that was back in February time, um, which again is talking you know, around ways businesses can get involved, but I think um, it's going to be ongoing. It's actually a nice plug. We've got Ian Reid, the Chief Exec of the Organising Committee, joining us for our, our international event next Wednesday. So I think he's on at, at four o'clock, so you can certainly tune in for that. Um, there's a couple of specific questions here. Gary uh, James um, is talking about, you know, he's, he's working with an energy broker and a firm who supply workwear um, and looking for, you know, who would he speak to at the council uh, to discuss what they do and ways of getting involved? And then um, Richard's, got a similar question um, around sort of tree and vegetation maintenance and, and who would he sort of contact 
um, to around delivery of those. So, I mean, are there specific um, or, you know, people or generic email addresses, or is that, a, again, since it's around communication, isn't it? How do people get hold of the right person at the council? I mean, I, I think um, obviously the, 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 the CPS is at Birmingham, not going to put up my email contact details on the chat. Um, so the vegetation management has recently insourced um, our grant maintenance service and some of the vegetation management on the highway is done through our primary contractor with Amy. Um, so I think that from that perspective, of the position with Amy, we need to be assessed to the broker. Um, from, the, from the GM perspective, uh, it's largely in hand, really. Great. Thank you, Richard. So I hope, um, again, there's a little bit of uh, specific information for, for people there. Um, and John's raised the point against finding events like today really worthwhile and you know, the point around communication. And, you know, it's something that we're all mindful of. Um, it's exactly why you know, we, you know, we put this on together, really, to help uh, spread the message. And I think that uh, as hopefully everyone who's tuned in is seeing um, that Richard, the council in general, are very open and keen. It's just making sure that everyone knows what the, the, the structures are in place, because we've got to have those, haven't we? We've got to say a lot of regulation uh, around this, but there is a human face there as well, and a real willingness and desire to try to make sure that, that we're procuring the best possible um, uh, contracts for, for the city, but also keeping as much of that within uh, the city and the region as we possibly can for the benefit of all. Um, Rob's dropped a, a, a point in here saying that he's had a stumbling block, he's always been getting involved in uh, with the tier one and tier two contractors once the um, the work has been avoided. I mean, any, any views on that, Richard, or just ways of maybe encouraging uh, tier one suppliers to to be working uh, with local um, local businesses sort of down through the supply chain? Uh, yeah, certainly. I think um, our charter is proof of that. Um, I mean, interestingly, personally, my um, thoughts are revolving on, on how we utilise the charter more effectively to um, deliver greater benefits to not just the but to the suburban in general. I think at the moment, we um, our tender documentation, we, we invite almost we invite the buyer to say, tell us what you're going to do. Um, and, I, and I think it's a good opportunity for us to almost turn, turn that round. So I ask if you want to be successful in um, working on our highways or working on our ways, these are the sort of commitments that we expect to look at. Are you happy to follow that? So, and then again, it becomes very specific around what percentage of what particular aspect of the charter um, would apply. So, you know, there's, there's something that we can do that. We'll tell you what we want from. from from our supply chain, and an element of that is certainly about use of second tier, use of local second tier suppliers. Thank you, Richard. And Gary's just said, I think there's a little bit of uh, trouble with the audio there, but I uh, would so say we are going to be sharing the uh, the recording with everyone who's who's signed up, so don't worry about that. Uh, Michael's just come back here with a specific question on uh, the games and their recruitment, and is that uh, being put out to Hayes to manage? Or is it being managed via Birmingham City Council? And I suppose there's a couple of strands there, aren't there? Because there's a lot of roles that the organising committee, which is not Birmingham City Council, are recruiting. And then there'll be um, roles that the council themselves are recruiting in relation. Um, so, you know, so again, where we are looking to recruit, certainly on an interim basis, if there are sort of more generalist roles, that would go through our Hayes um, contract. Um, I can't really speak to the organising committees as to what they're doing. We certainly did signpost them in the, in the direction of, of, of Hayes, but obviously we recognise that certain um, skills don't necessarily lend themselves to those sort of agencies, really. Yeah, and I think you know, it's the Find It portal, which is where an awful lot of games activity is going, and you know, we've seen a number of roles just advertised, sort of uh, generally we've put out comms around a number of those, Michael, so I think it's it's outside of that that Hayes relationship, um, but certainly, you know, communication and tuning in is key. If anyone, I mean, we put out a daily bulletin, uh, which goes to about sixteen thousand individuals now 
uh, in the region. And um, if you're not signed up to that, it's free to subscribe to then, you know, that's a great way of keeping up to date with local business news and, you know, way of sort of seeing what opportunities are out there, just keeping your ear to the ground. And um, I'll see if, if my colleague Grace can either drop a, a link to that in the, the chat now or we'll, uh, when we, we follow up after this, we'll, we'll send a link and it's an easy thing to sign up to. But I think just making sure that you're doing all that you can uh, to keep abreast of what is going on. I mean, you know, now more than ever. Um, and so you're in the best position to grab the opportunities when they come. So, um, well, the time has flown by and we've got about four minutes uh, to go until we, we finish. I, I'm just going to sort of go back to um, to Richard, Jane and, and Tristan. I mean, if there's any final closing messages from from you um just to sort of wrap up and maybe even just reflect on the the sort of the questions that we've had and the tone anyone um want to sort of come in there or just to to give us your thoughts before i uh, finish i uh, think tristan was coming off mute but yeah rich do you want to, do you want to I'll, go I'll, first no i'll wait for i'll wait for Chris to catch up. cheers thanks richard um, I just think this event's been really good, actually. It's really helpful for me um, as a sort of portfolio holder to understand the concerns of businesses and see what the thoughts are in the community. So I think the main thing for me is that we keep this relationship going with the Chamber. Um, I'm really glad the Chamber put this on today. Um, and I think across a whole range of areas, we're working really well together now. And I think it's really important to sustain that because fundamentally what we want in Birmingham is a vibrant low economy. Uh, we all know we're going to enter some pretty difficult economic times uh, coming over the next over the horizon and I think it's it's more important than ever that actually we're all we're all together in this so it's in everyone's interest to make sure that we are working together both for us in terms of getting the best value and the best social value we can from our contracts but actually supporting a really strong vibrant local economy we've got big opportunities coming over the line HS2 Commonwealth Games we have got a great future ahead of us but that doesn't really matter unless the local economy and local people therefore benefit from that. No. So my plea really is just to keep keep letting us know what the issues are and we will keep working from our side to, res to resolve them. And thank you, Paul, for setting this all up. No, well, great. look, I mean, thank you, Tristan. Thank you, Jane and, and, and Richard for, for joining us and, and sharing. And I mean, I absolutely echo that. And, you know, uh, I mean, while we do have challenges right now, you think about the momentum we've had in this city and region, certainly over the last decade. Um, and, you know, we will get back to that. And, and you know, HS2 in particular and the Commonwealth Games, these are, are opportunities which are somewhat unique to us. Yes, HS2 is going to spread out across the whole country, but it's headquartered here. We're going to be right in the heart of the network. And, you know, the Games is a, a sort of a, a three quarters of a billion pound investment which is happening here. It's not happening anywhere else in the country. So we've sort of got, um, you know, the deck is slightly stacked in our favour. Uh, we need to make the most of that. And absolutely, you know, communication, as we already mentioned, is so key. And I think, you know, uh, the Chamber will certainly, um, I think, build on today. You can see how, you know, there's willing on both sides. And if there's frustration, sometimes it's just because it can be hard to navigate uh, our way through. And certainly a procurement, as we know, um, has its challenges so um let's keep the conversation going and i think you know that idea richard that that you mentioned around you know a session um maybe to sort of throw out you know warts and all some very tangible examples of of things which are causing problems well let's get them out on the table let's discuss them uh and see what we can fix to make it easier and better going forward so we'll certainly commit to picking up uh on that and following up and say on the back of this we'll, we'll send out the recording um to you all um and we'll also include some uh, other bits of information and links from today we'll also publicize this more widely so you know please do feel free to share with, with colleagues um and others uh, who may find this useful and so just as we approach 10 45 bang on time i know in uh, this this new world now of uh frequent um zoom meetings and the like everyone will have something else to dash off to now so maybe just time before your 11 o'clock to put the kettle on have a cup of tea have a great rest of the day thank you for your support uh continue working with the chamber and we'll look forward to seeing you at another event soon thank you very much thanks, thanks very much thanks paul bye thank you everyone cheers bye-bye